If you don't know, I just got a library card about three months ago. And since then, I have been going absolutely bonkers. Most recently released are down at the bottom and the ones that were released, this one was, this book was novel book was released back in 2017. So I'm going to talk about the least recent to most recent in that order. First book I want to talk about is Snowed In with Murder. This is a book that I may or may not get to because it seems like a cozy thriller and I'm going to move for cozy. I am going to move for thriller, but I have other books that are very thrilling that I want to get to before I get to this one. This book is called Snowed In with Murder by Aurora Lady Walrus? There's no retreat and no surrender when Erica Bloom finds herself stuck in a snowstorm with a stone cold killer. Hello, sign me up. Yeah, sign me up. This is more like a January read for me. December is not giving winter right now. It's not giving snowed in at the moment. But January, early February, this is a great, great time to be had. Erica arrives to discover mom has rented the lodge to a reality TV show. They're filming the wealthy but awful Boatwright brood who's been summoned here by their patriarch because, so he says, one of them wants to kill him. Great television, terrible timing. <laughs> I'm excited to read this one. I hope I am able to read this one before it is due back at the library. I would hate to have to extend it. I hate extending my loans from the library. Okay, the second book is Killman Creek by Rachel Kane. This is book number two in the Steelhouse Lake mystery series, okay? I talked about this in another video that I have either before this one or after, right after this video about series that I accidentally started. When I read Steelhouse Lake, I had no idea it was a series, but I got hooked and addicted and book one ends on a cliffhanger. So here's book two. Okay. Um, book one is about this woman named Gwen Proctor. She changed her name from Gina Royal when her husband was found out to be a serial killer on accident when somebody crashed into their garage. So she had to change her name, pick up her children, move to a remote area called Steel House Lake. But then a body turns up in the lake that she lives on and she doesn't feel as safe as she once did. So that was book one. Ended on a cliffhanger. Book two picks up 12 days after the end of book one, and I'm excited to jump into this book. The only thing is, I just finished reading this book right here, which means I'm not in the mood for anything remotely sadistic or crazy. The third book. Actually, I just picked this one up today. So I want to get into Christmas spirits. I read a Bertha Jackson novel a couple weeks ago and it was centered around Christmas, but it didn't have the, all the Christmas elements I wanted. This book is called Perfectly Fine Christmas by LaJill Hunt. Who says Cinderella is the only one who gets a happily ever after? Shouldn't the fairy godmother get a knight in shiny armor too? After all, she's the one with all the magic. Kendall Freeman. A self-assured, full-figured seamstress and aspiring fashion designer loves Christmas. Naya Fine, a shy, introverted, plus-size teen, is dealing with the recent loss of her mother. A twist of fate leads to a unique friendship between Kendall and Naya. Is there a possibility of finding her own true love in the process? Who doesn't want to read a book like this on Christmas? Christmas time. Next book I want to talk about. Children of Virtue and Vengeance. I accidentally started the series in 2018 and now since the author of this series will be coming out with book three in June of 2024, I decided to go ahead and go to my library and pick up book two. In the first book, Children of Blood and Bone, it follows three main characters, a teen fantasy, probably like 14, 15, 16, around that area. So one is Zelie is the Magi, who is a part of this group of people in her world who have magic, but they have been suppressed because people don't want them to use their magic. And also the first book followed the princess of the king who did all of those horrible things. Yeah, the princess, she somehow um, escapes out of the castle because she finds out her, her father is horrible. She knows a horrible secret about her dad and she wants to make right with the people of the Magi. The third perspective we are following is her brother, which is also the son of the king who rained down hell on the Magi. Hope I'm saying this right, but the people with the white hair who have all of the beautiful magic, they are now trying to go find the princess, bring her back home, while also keeping the magi suppressed. Very fun. I enjoyed it. Had a great time. I read it last year in the summer, and then, like I said, since I found out that 
um, this author is supposed to be coming out with book three next year or in six months. So I decided to go ahead and pick up book two from my library and go ahead and read it. That way I know once that book come out, am I going to purchase the whole series and keep it on my shelf since I already have book one? Or am I just going to try to wait for it to come out in the library and, you know, fight kids in the aisles so I can read the book first? I'm not above it next okay so we're getting into a little bit more of the more recent books yeah these are books released in the last few years so this next book i'm talking about is called race a black lives matter thriller knew nothing about this book until i ran into it in the library and it says caleb moon is a young idealistic journalist reporting on everyday racial injustices but when he is arrested at a police brutality protest, he meets a racist white cop. The interactions indicate the lengths to which racism is systemic and pushes Caleb's approach to injustice from theory into practice. Race is a powerful, riveting, and timely novel about one man's quest to destroy the system from within before it destroys him. Yes, this was written by a group, SLMN, which is a writing duo made up of two unique talents. Yeah, we'll do a little more digging about them, but I am really interested to see how this book plays out. It's very short. It's only 200 pages, literally 202 pages. So next, When No One Is Watching, a thriller by Alyssa Cole. I am interested in reading this book just because there are a lot of areas being gentrified and they made it a thriller. She, this author, made it a thriller. The synopsis says, Rear Widow, mm -mm, Rear Window meets Get Out in this gripping thriller in which the gentrification of a Brooklyn neighborhood takes on a sinister new meaning. When does coincidence become conspiracy? Where do people go when gentrification pushes them out? Can Sydney and Theo trust each other or themselves long enough to find out before they too disappear? What? Sign me up. The next book I want to talk about is Glory Me by Danielle As. I said no. I'm so sorry. This book is set in Louisiana. It's hot and sticky Sunday in Lafayette, Louisiana, and Glory has settled into her usual after church routine. Sitting at a corner table, Glory hears that her best friend, a nun, beloved by the community, has been found dead in her apartment. I, I, don't, I don't even think I knew this was a mystery. When police declare the mysterious death of suicide, Glory is convinced that there must be more to the story. Um, it says the first vivid, charming crime series set in Louisiana by This is another series? Y'all, this is another series. And this, this is gonna remind me of um, A Glimmer of Death by Valerie Wilson Wesley. I think it's her name. I've read the first two books in that series and she's a sleuth investigator, black woman set in South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina type of thing. That's a, that's a good mystery as well. If you're into mystery, but you're not into the gore, you don't really want to read the vivid, vivid details of what happened and why and how, but you just love the um, whodunit aspect, I would recommend that series. I have not read book three yet, but I will as soon as I get my hands on it. And apparently I just accidentally started a fourth series. Last but not least, let's talk about the highly anticipated, very, very draw dropping, can't believe it is what it is, All the Little Raindrops by Mia Sherry. So this is the last book that I borrowed from the library on one of my more recent visits. And I had no idea anything about this book. I saw it on the wall under new releases. I liked the cover of it and I read the back and I was sold. Um, if you don't know what this book is about, this book is about two high school seniors who are kidnapped and tortured together. Those two seniors are Noel and Evan. Evan's dad kills Noel's mom before the story takes place. Years later, now a private investigator revisits the crime when he learns it may be ongoing. He reaches out to Noel for help and they discover that the answers lie with a man known as the Collector. To close their case and solve the ones that follow, Noel and Evan must unmask their mysterious spectator, the only man who knows enough secrets to take their captors down. It was, it was dark. There was nothing explicitly explained, but you got the picture. I don't think I would recommend this to everyone. Please, please, please check 
the content warnings, reading warnings. Check the cliff notes if you need to. Check what the people are saying on Goodreads. Don't spoil it for yourself, but check. Check and check again. I almost did not finish this book twice. There were two points in which I wanted to put this book down. I think there's 17 at the time that they go missing. And that just, I think this may be one of my last time reading teen thrillers, young adult thrillers, anything like that. Because I don't understand how the plot would change at all if everybody was an adult. Yes, these things happen. I know that they happen. I don't want to read about it for entertainment. And that's how I feel. So that's my fault because I didn't check the content warnings. I just read the back and I was like, oh, this sounds amazing. Do your research. Protect yourself. Happy reading, but protect yourself. With all of that being said, the fact that I did not DNF it, I was intrigued and they didn't do it in a way of like Karen Slaughter. Karen Slaughter's book can't do it. She has a way of making you feel like you are in the most horrific scene you don't want to be in. Hmm. I picked this book up because I also remembered that I read Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan when that came out six, seven years ago. I liked it. I don't remember anything about it really, except that I liked it. The point is I knew the author's name. I'm into thrillers now. If you are into something dark, a little twisted, and when you find out who the collector is, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't. You want to talk about a psychological thriller? Finding out who the collector is. That's a that is the definition of a psychological thriller. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if you found that out? You're talking about twisted. You do find out how the connection of the first murder loops around to the connection of these two, Noel and Evan, and where they are now. It takes a while. I was getting frustrated, I will admit. I was going to give this book zero stars if it did not connect the dots, but it did connect the dots and I appreciate that. This book includes romance as a subplot, but it's not sub enough, okay? When it comes to thriller, mystery, and romance, that romance needs to be all the way down here unless, unless it is a bodyguard protecting somebody and they form a romance. That is like the only time I can take mystery romance. This romance to me, in my opinion, was not romantic. I mean, how could it be? But there is romance. And also on page 194, it turned into a romance trope that I don't like at all. That trope might not bother you, but it grinds my gears. It, it, it jams my nerves. It gets on my last nerve and then it bungee jumps off of it. I do not like that trope. What is my rating? I don't know. But that being said, I don't want to rate it. I think that you should look it up. You should decide if you want to read it or not and go from there. And please let me know what you think about it, okay? I don't. I, 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 that's the best I can do because I, I don't know. Thank you guys so much for watching this video of me talking about the books that I recently got from the library. Please go check out your local library. They have a lot of very interesting books, a lot of new releases, as you can tell. Okay. And I hope if nothing else, you have gained some encouragement to go to your local library, check out something that you may not have thought you wanted to read before and comment down below. If you have been to your local library recently, um, if you've read any of these books, if you're excited to hear about more about any of these books, please let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!